and a good morning, good afternoon, and a very good evening to you, the good people of YouTube. Hope you are today, hope you are feeling grand, and always ready well. Welcome to a Q&A Wednesday, everybody. Um, it's going to be a four-question Q&A today, as I have a dentist appointment I need to get to. So, um, I, I'm, I can, I've only got time for four questions today, sadly. But um, I, hopefully, the answer to these questions is okay. Okay, so we're going to dive in, and um, question one. That's where we're going to start. Well, let's start on question four for a second. No, it's not weird. Okay, so question one is, uh, what's your overall opinions on Iron Maiden and the three guitarists? I love Iron Maiden and I love three guitarists. My dream band would be a three guitar lineup. Uh, I would love to be in a band that's got three guitarists because I always have multiple ideas that I always want to hear live. Um, after playing as a trio for such a long period of time with the Dave Simpson trio where you just got guitar, bass and drums. That I always wanted to do guitar harmonies. I also I also wanted some textural guitar stuff going on and uh, also certain songs I would like like a textural guitar, kind of a lead guitar and an acoustic guitar, if you know what I mean. So you, so you have all these three kind of elements. And I and Maiden work their free guitar lineup in such an awesome, awesome way. And they're all different. You know, Dave's different to Adrian. Adrian's different to Yannick. Yannick's different to everyone in the world. Uh, yeah. Yannick, Yannick Gers is a bizarre guitar player. He's a, he's a wicked guitar player, but he, he is like, you know, well, in all fairness, they all are. I mean, Dave's got his own style, which I absolutely adore. Dave is my favourite guitarist and I am made, and he's been one of my favourite guitarists forever. I remember uh, my dad bringing me back the tape, a cassette tape of Iron Maiden's first album. And finding out, like, um, and all the pe oh, weird enough, I listened to the first album of Iron Maiden over and over and over again on this tape. And the parts that stuck out to me at the point in time, I was just like, I really like that guitar player. I don't know who he is, but I like that. And I found out all the parts that stuck out to me were Dave. And um, and then I got then I got like, a couple of more Iron Maiden albums, and and then I got this uh, live in Rock in Rio DVD in two thousand and four, and. I just became a Dave Murray fanatic. I, I love Dave. I think he's just one of the most awesome guitarists. And he's got his own thing. Dave's got his own sound. He's got his own feel. He's got a hell of a feel as well. But I, I love Dave. I mean, Adrian's a really awesome guitarist as well. And Yannick is just mental. He's absolutely out there. Uh, Yannick is. It's like he doesn't... He does, he fr Yannick Gers just throws caution to the wind and plays totally whatever he wants. And sometimes it can be a bit hard to hear, I think. So sometimes it can be a bit kind of like, I don't really know where you're going with that one. And then other times, it's just absolutely phenomenal. No, 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 no. And it's just amazing. Um, uh, one, of the, one of those points would be the his solo in Blood Brothers is incredible. Absolutely incredible. And I always like hear Yannick's solo in Hallowed Be Thy Name because it's just crazy. And it's just a wicked contrast to Dave's, uh, who come who comes first in Hallowed Be Thy Name, because Dave plays a solo and then Yannick plays a solo, and I like the contrast between the two. It's really really cool. So um, so yeah, I mean I, I love Iron Maiden, I love the free guitar lineup. Like I say, I want a band that's free guitar lineup because I've got all these ideas in my head of what I want for a free guitar lineup to do, and like where they all need to be and where they all need to sit. So that's my kind of dream guitar kind of band if you is, is a free guitar free guitar band free guitars one bass one drummer and uh everyone has to be able to kind of sing to a certain extent to do backing vocals well not everyone but you know what i mean at least two people to do backing vocals so you can get harmonies kind of you know different levels of harmonies that's my dream band it'll never happen but it's a dream band yeah so um see so yeah, i mean I, I love iron maiden i love the free guitar lineup i think it works they 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 have done it to a point where it just it's just perfect. It just makes sense. You know, it just makes total sense to them. And it's just really cool. So, uh, you also asked, have you heard Steve Harris's new band, British Lion, and your opinions? I have heard them, but I don't really have an opinion on them because I don't listen to them enough. So, my opinion won't be valid even if I had one because I haven't listened to them enough. But I have heard them and it is cool. I do, I do like it. But it's just like, it's just, it's just Iron Maiden in a different form, really. But... I do like it, but um, I don't really have an opinion of it that that's valid or, or really fair because I haven't heard them enough. You know what I mean? It's, it's it won't be a fair opinion. So, um, but they are cool. I did like I did like what I heard. So, uh, so yeah, that that's, that that was quick. Um, 
I don't really have anything to say that. If I don't have an opinion, I don't. I can't really say. And then the last part of question one is, what do you think is the most important when trying to play play like Dave Murray? When playing like Dave Murray, the key to it is feel and flow. Much in the same way as John Fashanti or Jimi Hendrix. They have a flow to them. You know, it's, it's never just kind of like staggered and, oh, it's this lick and then it's that lick and then it's this lick and then it's that lick. It's got a perfect flow to it. Because I, I like th th there's some guitarists where it's like, you know, lick one, lick two, lick three. You can kind of break down this guitar solo into these parts. Whereas people like John Fashanti, Jimi Hendrix, Rory Gallagher, Paul Kossoff, uh, Dave Gilmore, Dave Murray, they don't have that. They have this flow. And it's a perfect flow where they start and they just they just go through and then they finish. And it's just this gorgeous, gorgeous thing. Um, so the key to it is a flow and also it's neck pickup. I mean, Dave uses his neck pickup 85% of the time for solos. He does go to the bridge uh, and he will go to the bridge if he's using a wah-wah as well. But I said I have I, he does... He has, does use a wah wah on the neck pickup as well. And Dave uses a wah wah in the way Jimi Hendrix uses the wah wah. He doesn't go wah 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 wah. We know, like I mean, like, you know, every note is wah. It, it, it's an expressional thing, the wah wah pedal is. So sometimes he'll have it on, and you won't necessarily know he's got it on, but he'll have his foot on it, and he'll just have it, like, in a certain position, and he'll use it to augment sounds. And he's just a, he's such a, such a perfect field player, David. I'd look. Dave Murray is one of those people that I, I would love to meet. He's, he's one of those. Like, he's like John Fashanti to me. Or, you know, unfortunately, I can't meet Jimi Hendrix. But, you know, there's all these people who I'd love to meet, and Dave Murray is one of them. I would absolutely love to meet Dave Murray. Apparently, he's an extremely nice guy as well. And I'd just love to meet him. I'd just love to talk to him and just, you know, because I have, I have took a lot from Dave Murray, especially in my kind of, like, wanting to play fast, like, bit, like legato lines and stuff like that. I, I've, I've took a lot from Dave there. And um, so, yeah, I mean, and also another, another thing to put is don't be afraid of distortion. You know, with, 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 with Dave, he has a lot of gain. You know, there's a lot of sustain, a lot of, sustain and a lot of, a lot of gain. Uh, I, think, I think, if I remember correctly, because they, they use the, uh, the JMP-1, the rack mount Marshall, if I remember correctly, there was an article ages ago in a, in a magazine called Gear. It showed you the settings of Dave's JMP1. And the JMP1s are modded, I think, but either way. And he has gain flat out. You know, gain is turned all the way up. And it always sounded like that to me anyway, even in the early days. You know, you can kind of tell Dave's gain is cranked to the teeth. You know what I mean? He's got as much as he, he can get. Um, if you if there's, a, there's some footage of him playing uh, Walking on Glass on YouTube somewhere. And uh, you can tell Dave's got a lot of gain because the, the way it sustains. You know, it's just a perfect kind of like seamless sustain. Whereas uh, Adrian doesn't quite have the same amount. Um, I think he does now, but back then he didn't. Adrian had a lot of a, you know, not more of a cleaner sound, but he had a, a little less gain, whereas Dave had a lot more. Dave's got a bit of a, a thicker kind of sound. Uh, Adrian was a lot more kind of cutting. Um... Kind of sound, and y Yannick's tone is quite cutting as well. I think Dave's is the big, fat, juicy, warm sound. You can always hear it when you hear Iron Maiden play, especially in recent concerts. They're panned across the stereo spectrum, and Dave is always—you can always hear Dave over on the left, and you can hear Yannick on the right, and and Adrian's about here, and then Steve covers the lot, and uh, Bruce covers the lot, and uh, Nico covers the lot. But the guitarists are in kind of situ uh, in the stereo kind of like picture of, of the band. And you can always pick them out. It's really, really cool. And Dave has a really thick guitar tone on the on the left side. Uh, Yannick is quite cutting. It's a it's a very kind of mid rangey honk tone. Yannick has got. And Adrian's quite. Um, it's a classic rock tone. Adrian's got like a real classic kind of rock tone. And Dave's got his own like it's just this thick, warm, stratty Marshall tone. But um, most important, like I say, is a lot of gain, feel and flow. It's got to flow. And it's just getting fingers working. And also light strings. Dave uses nines. He's always used really light strings. Don't you can't you can play like Dave with heavier strings, but it's a lot easier to play with light strings. 
Uh, I'm gonna do a video on this soon because I'm cha I'm gradually changing all my guitars over to nines because I'm I'm just bored of tens now. I, I, like sometimes tens can be nice and sometimes it can just be like this is just a bit annoying. And every time I pick up a guitar with nines on it, I'm like, why am I not doing this? So and I did use nines so like I've used nines on and off for years and years. And every time I go to nines, I'm like I like this more. So I'm just decided to change. But um, to go back, I mean, I can always obviously come back to tens and whatnot. But like, you know, I, I, I do love nines. I've got a new guitar that I shove some nines on. And I was just like, this is just heavenly. And it does help with those uh, Dave Murray like, legato -y fast kind of lines, stuff like that. So there's there's a couple of key elements to Dave. Like I say, a lot of gain, feel and flow, um, light strings, neck pickup, um, you know, learning runs as well, these runs that Dave does, and also just total control. Dave's never, never, he never gets in trouble, Dave doesn't. He's got such command and control over the guitar. He's, he's just, he's got it. You know what I mean? He's got it. He doesn't have to think. You can see he doesn't think in the way he, he's, you know, the way his face goes and the way he acts. You know, he's switched off to it. He's just playing what he feels. And, um, and, and that's, that's another thing as well. But again, that takes time to develop. But Dave is a... I can't... I love Dave out of uh, Yannick and Adrian. I mean, I've got nothing against them too, but Dave just appeals to me so much. His guitar tone, his guitar playing. I just I just love it. And he's got the same name as me, so it's even cooler. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, I, I, and I, I, love his, I, love his, I love his guitars. I love his guitars. And his guitar tone is heaven. It really is. Anyway, but yeah, there's there's a couple there's a couple of things, but um, and learn his solos. I mean, the thing is, if you want to play like Dave, learn his solos and learn the runs he uses and start incorporate them outside of Iron Maiden. You know, there's a couple of runs that I've got that are Dave runs. Um, there's this one. Let me quickly show you. I don't have time for this. <laughs> yes, I do. Shut up. So what, that's what my brain said. It's like, we don't have time for this. We do, trust me. Okay, so there's a Dave run here. I don't know if you'll be able to see this because the, the light's not very good. But um, what it is, is you start off on the uh, the F sharp note. Say we're in E minor. So it's a run that goes uh, on the 11th fret on the G, 12th fret G, uh, 14th fret G. So that's it that there and then we go down to the B string which is 12 13 15 and then we go to the high E string and we do 14 15 17 that that's a Dave Murray run that I stole years and years ago and, and it's wormed its way into my into my guitar playing and I really like it and Dave does all these weird kind of alternate kind of things where he, he'll, he can do it straight like that or he can go you know, that, those kind of things, which is, which is the kind of, the same kind of run. Uh, I don't think, I, I ain't got time to explain that one, but it's, it's kind of the same kind of thing, but you're just basically going up the E minor pentatonic. So, you know, and there's, there's also these kind of cool, uh, there is those cool things. But Dave has such a, a lovely flow to his, his playing. If you watch his hand, it just flows on the fretboard. He's got such a such a relaxed technique, like ridiculously relaxed technique. And it, and again, that's another thing as well. Relaxed. That's another that's another um, point that Dave's playing is how relaxed he is when he plays. You can see the guitar's in the at the right height. You know uh, the sound is correct. He knows what he wants to do. He knows where he is. He knows what key he's in. So he can just turn off and he just plays and lets whatever happen happen and it's always awesome i've never seen dave murray play a single guitar solo of hang on that was literally the best thing i've ever seen <laughs> i love it absolutely love it so uh, there's a few things about i could talk about dave for hours but i'm gonna have to move on because as much as i don't like to think my brain is right in saying we don't have time we kind of don't have time but anyway so yeah hope that's your question uh, i'm gonna move on to question two now um like i said i could talk about dave for hours but i'm gonna have to move up question two uh, when you mic your cab in your room, is the mic tone the same as your amp tone? Like, you know, in the room, is the you know, is the sound that the microphone picks up the same as the amp it sounds in the room? Uh, to me, yes. Uh, the, the, what I hear in the room 
normally translates, for instance, like the KGR Harmony uh, Arare pedal that I demoed uh, on Monday. Um, the sound I got out of that, I wanted that to come across really well, especially certain kind of like, you know, certain tones that I got out of that pedal. I wanted them to come out exactly as, as they are in the room. And luckily they did. And the thing is, the Zoom QA is absolutely awesome for that. And also, I'm using a, a, a classic mic as well, the SM57. The SM57, I think, is like is like the perfect mic for guitar recording because it does capture that sound. Um, it does... I mean, it, it sounds the same to me. I don't know. I mean, to other, to other people's ears, it might sound different. But... Um, I don't know, maybe I should do a video on... I mean, show me to write it down. I should do a video on this, shouldn't I? You know, is... Um, yeah, because that's interesting. But to me, it sounds the same. The sound that... It, the only the only thing... The only thing I would say is, obviously, when it's mic'd, it sounds clearer than in the room. Because when, you, when you're in the room... There's other other noises. I mean, there's there's a cabinet in front of the in the amp that always rattles when I play. Uh, so that, that that gets in the way of the sound sometimes. There's things moving about. Uh, there's all sorts of kind of like little variables. But when you hear the actual the, the mic recording back, it, it does it to me. It just sounds um. It it sounds the same. It just sounds the same to me. I I, I don't feel it's is, there's any difference in in the tonality at all. It, like I say it's just a little bit clearer because it's right there on the speaker cone and it doesn't really pick up anything else. It, occasionally you can hear the plectrum, um, on on the on the guitar strings and then all, uh, sometimes you can kind of hear pedals and stuff like that and whatever. But you know it, it's clearer sound and to me it sounds the same. I'd say to other people's ears it might not, but to me it does sound exactly the same. So, uh, but yeah, I might do a, like a little quick video on that at some point actually, because that'd be quite interesting to hear what you think, people of the tube. See what you reckon. If, if, see if it's any different whatsoever. It's like use the room mics and then use the the camera mic. Uh, use the fifty seven, sorry, on the cam and just see you know see what you kind of perceive as different. Because to me it doesn't sound any different. Now the sound that this the fifty seven picks up is is the sound in the room. Uh, you know, the Araro was a classic example of that. I mean, the st the sound the sound in the room sounded like it sounded in the video, which is why I got over hyped and stimulated by that pedal is because it sounded so good, and I was just like, oh my god, this is amazing! And th because it sounded so good, it was one of those things of um, you know, um, yeah, it, it just picked it up. It just picked it up perfectly. So yeah, I mean, I don't, it, I don't think it sounds any different personally myself. But like I say, you know, I might uh, hopefully do a video on that at some point and get, get your opinion on it. But to me, it doesn't sound any different. It sounds the same. Um, yeah, there's there's no kind of real kind of altering, you know. And, and the thing is too, I don't EQ it. You know what I mean? It, it doesn't go through compression and EQ and stuff like that. It just goes straight into the camera, and that's it. And that's another reason why I like the Q8 is there's no, uh, there's no, you can't fiddle with it. What you, what you get out of your amp is what you get. You know what I mean? You, your amp has to sound good, otherwise the Q8 will pick up it sounding bad. You know what I mean? It's it's one of those things. So, um, and that, again, you, you can't hide there. You know what I mean? I can't hide behind kind of compressors and 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 mic pre's and well, it does. Have, it technically is a mic pre, but there's no kind of EQ or compression or whatever on the on the camera. It just is a mic pre. You just go straight in. There's no way of altering the EQ in the QA. It's just what it is. You know, I'm, I'm I can imagine what they do is they just set the EQ flat so it just accepts anything that comes its way. And uh, as long as you get the the volume levels right, which is what I'm always checking. If you see me looking off to the the, the right side, I'm always looking at the volume. Uh, to, to make sure they're not peaking and they're, 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 like correct the volume, uh, because uh, if it gets above it, it can peak out and it can sound rubbish. If it sounds too quiet, it'll sound a bit more muffled. It, you need to get it in the right place, like there's a little bit of a sweet spot. But to me, I don't think the cab in the room sounds any different to the the cab mic top. I mean, I'd say in the room you can feel it more because you've got more speakers going, and you're, also you you're there, you can feel it a lot more, but because it, it's moving air, whereas obviously with the microphone you can't really feel that as much, uh, because unless you plug it through a guitar amplifier and turn it up, um, 
because obviously you know it doesn't have the it doesn't have the low end it doesn't have the kind of like the the you know uh, phone speakers and computer speakers don't push as much air as a guitar amplifier so um so yeah so uh yeah so so i i personally think it does sound kind of um kind of uh very 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 similar you know, well not very similar it sounds exactly the same to me there have been a couple of times when i've just realized i left my email open in the background there um there have been a couple of times where i'm like um that didn't sound the way i thought it did but that was due down to where i was stood because i'm not stood in front of the amp i'm stood to the side of it sometimes my perception can get askew which is why in recent videos i've started facing the amplifier instead of kind of like standing it with like intro jams are okay but standing with the amp that way facing that way and i'm stood right next to it you don't really get an idea of it so when i face it and it's there i can hear it better it's why i've why i've changed kind of like you know where where i'm at with it more than anything so um so yeah so yeah be, be out for one but i think it, i think it sounds pretty much yeah, identical if not exactly the same apart from a couple of different elements which obviously you know is the way it is you can't pick up the ump and the room you know what i mean it's, it's you know you don't get the room sound on a close mic so to say it's like that so so yes uh be that for what it may but I, I i think it sounds the same and i say the sm57 is perfect for that kind of thing anyway it just sounds awesome i love that microphone um i don't particularly like double micing amps you know what I mean? It's like, you know, I just like one mic. You know, I like that directness of one mic. You know, when you've got two mics, I think it's, it's good. But the thing is, if I was going to double mic something, I would use a different amp. You know what I mean? I wouldn't just kind of like double mic. I don't really like the idea of double micing one cab and one speaker with one amp. I like the idea of double micing amps with two amp. Double micing things with two amps. So like... So, for instance, like the CR120 would have a mic on it and the Marshall MG would have a mic on it. And then you blend them two instead of just kind of having two mics on the MG, if that makes any sense. Uh, because I think you get a bit of a better um, kind of blend. You know what I mean? It's like two different sounds making one. Um, you know, that, that, I, I like that more through kind of like messing around with microphones. I don't really... I don't really like two mics on one amp. And especially not on one speaker. I don't like. I don't really like the sound. I think it sound. It, it can sound a bit too. Not tinny, but I just don't particularly like the sound of it. If I, I don't know if that makes any sense whatsoever. But when uh, when we recorded the Duke's Deluder album, my orange was mic'd up with two microphones, and I really like the guitar tones I got on that album, but. It wasn't. There was there was a fizz, and I didn't like the fizz. It kind of picked up its high end one, and it, 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 and we had a fifty seven and and some other mic. I forget what it is now, but it was the other mic that added the fizz. The SM fifty seven caught what I wanted, but unfortunately the, the the other mic caught what I didn't want, and that got blended in, and I didn't like it. So, in all fairness, I would have, if I had known that would have been the case. I mean, the thing was we were rushed, so I didn't have time to kind of think about it. It was just kind of like ah, get in and record. So, um, you know, we only had two days and unfortunately one of those days was kind of like, you know, we had, to, we, had, we had to do something on one of those days and we kind of lost half a day. So it was a bit kind of like, you know, do what you can kind of deal. But um, so I I personally like, I, I think it sounds, yeah, I 50, 57 and it, I personally think it sounds like, that was a tangent. I don't know. Okay, so I'm going to move on to question three now because, yeah, that was, that was, yeah, I'm running out of time. Um... Okay, so question three is, will you ever make a video on how to make pedal boards? Uh, yeah, if, um, I do want to build a pedal board at some point that will incorporate the HX. Uh, for instance, uh, one minute. One minute, minute, minute. Like this, this board here, I absolutely adore. And in all fairness, this is, this is, this is my main pedal board now because I love it. So, yeah. That, that's that's my main pedal board for in here. The, all the songs I've recorded on YouTube have just used these pedals. I've not used anything else. When I do live streams in here, this is all I use. But I would like to incorporate a pedal board. And I think, I'm think i thinking I'm just going to add on to this one. Uh, basically, just like a little... Find a way to clip it onto the right side. But I want to get the HX here. 
So put the HX onto this. Uh, and I might make just like one big board with the with the zoom pedal the zoom pedal elevated. Uh, but I like the I like the idea of having the HX on there for all sorts of different effects, de delays, reverbs, univibes, uh, you know, phases, whatever choruses. Uh, just to have a bit more variety of tone. I mean, it's going to make the pedal board bigger, and that's kind of a no no for where I gig really. I mean, I, I, for the longest time I gig with a big pedal board, and I always struggle to get it in, and I would I'd end up like sacrificing my comfortability that's not even a word but i would have to sacrifice me being comfortable for my pedal board and it would always annoy me because i was like well this is annoying because i can't move you know i'm just kind of crammed in here and my pedals are there and i can't do anything whereas with that board and the hx board that i've got that i use they're so small that they take up no floor space whatsoever so you can kind of actually get a bit more real estate to kind of move around in which i like doing uh, when I play, if I get to play on a stage, or even if I don't, if I'm playing on a floor, I like to have space. I don't like things cluttered, you know what I mean? I like leads out the way that I'm not going to worry about tripping over. Cause I, cause I just like I like things out the way and tidy because I like, I, I like things to be clear around me. I don't like the idea of stuff everywhere. And having a big pedal board has kind of run its course for me in, in a way because I'm kind of... I still love having a big pedal board. The, the pedal board I use for intro jams and stuff is really, really quite big. Although I do have a problem with it recently. I don't really know what's going on with it. I don't know if what's what the deal is. Um, but I do love having big pedal boards, but the small ones make so much more sense for the level I'm gigging at. I mean, if I, if I was gigging at like a semi-professional semi level where I was playing actual venues with actual stages, I would immediately have a pedal board with the HX on it and not worry about it because the stages will be able to uh, accommodate that kind of thing. But because the gigs I get to play when I get to play them, which is very rare these days, um, is basically like a pub floor and you're normally crammed in a corner and you've got to get a drum kit in the size of like a matchbox. You've got to get a bass amp, your amp, you know, in, in the, in the space, space of a matchbox. The small pedal boards are just more... Well, they're just better. It's just, it just makes more sense. So, so yeah, be that be that for what it may. But um, but yeah, uh, uh, when I do build another pedal board, yeah, I will film it. But at this point in time, like I say, I'm really, really sold on my small one. I really like my HX board, and I really like the board I've got through uh, in the demo room. Um, I just really, I'm quite set on those three at this point in time. I've got no real desire to build another one. But, but at some point, I would like to mess around with... Um, building a board with the HX on there as well. But uh, I don't know when that'll be. But yeah, at some point, yeah, I will I will show you how I build pedal boards and whatnot. Okay, so um, so I hope it's a question. Moving on to final question of everybody. Question four. Uh, was there any guitar playing style or genre that you tried and decided not to further develop? And if so, were there some styles you uh, abandoned, you regret doing so, uh, and you think, but uh, do it by... Oh. If so, were there some styles you abandoned, you regret doing, or do you think it was right abandoning it? Okay, yeah. Um, there was a lot of styles that I've tried and just gone, and that's not for me. Uh, jazz, uh, gypsy jazz guitar, Django Reinhardt. I played Django Reinhardt stuff for about two years, and it just didn't work out. I just eventually I just got a bit fed up of it. It just it, it never really sat with me. I, I wanted to learn how to play it, and then... Once I started learning to play it, I was like, I'm not feeling it. And then I kind of forced myself to kind of do it. And I, it just made me not want to do it even more. And, you know, certain certain elements of jazz I don't particularly get on with. Uh, shredding as well. I uh, like Ingve Malmsteen stuff. Uh, when I first started playing, I had a massive Ingve Malmsteen binge for about, like, a year. But it just petered out. And, you know, and, and also kind of, like, later on, kind of like you know, there was there was periods in time when i was practicing kind of doing sweet picking and an eight finger tapping and, and all that kind of thing and everything i i know when something doesn't feel right you know what i mean i know when something isn't working for me um so yeah i mean there was a lot of styles that i did i have i've just kind of like sacked off so to wait so it's uh, like shred guitar definitely Jazz guitar definitely. Uh, it just it just didn't click with me. It just didn't click. I mean, it, it's nothing against the music style. It just didn't work for me. Um, what else was there? Uh, 
I mean, like heavy, heavy kind of heavy metal and like you know that, that kind of thing. I, I don't really play that anymore. I do like to play. I like to mess around with stuff like that, but I don't really play that style. You know, what I mean, it, the thing is, like a couple of years ago, well, many, many years ago, not a couple, uh, many years ago, I, I was, you know, when I was, it was just, it was when I first went back to college. Well, actually, it kind of developed before. It kind of developed in 2004, but I just wanted to be an amalgamation of, like, Jimi Hendrix and John Frusciante, which they're kind of the same anyway. But in 2004, I just kind of, like, you know, I'd, I'd, I'd been through the punk stage of been wanting to be Billy Joe and Dexter Holland and Noodles, and I had been through that, and then I'd been through the Slash phase, where I wanted to be Slash. I'd been through the Yngwie Malmsteen phase, and I've been through the you know uh, British punk phase of, of my guitar playing, and I and then I discovered Jimi Hendrix and really got heavily into John Frusciante like massively heavy. That was when I, 2004. I'd learned I'd learned all of By the Way in 2002, if I'm correct in that. I could be wrong actually. Was it 2003? It doesn't matter. I learned the entire album By the Way front to back in one of those years and that was my first delvings into John Frusciante and then I then I moved I went to Slash and I went to Ingo Malmsteen and I, I went to these other guitar players I didn't forget John I kept playing Under a Bridge and, and, and Minor Thing and these these John songs and, and stuff like that but I kind of I kind of didn't I don't, I don't want to say put him aside because I didn't but kind of he wasn't you know, Ingve Malmsteen was at the front and Slash was at the front. But as soon as I got into Jimi Hendrix, it brought me straight back to John. And it was 2004, 2005-ish when I, develop, when I developed the idea of, I just want to play like them. I don't really feel the desire to play like anybody else. I could feel it then. And it just kind of developed over the years. And through those years, I obviously have tried different things. I've, you know, like I say, Gypsy Jazz. Um... You know all these other styles, heavy metal, heavy heavy rock, and stuff like that. But it always comes back to that. It always comes back to that kind of like you know John Frusciante, Jimi Hendrix thing. You know, and there have been more influences added since then. You know, there's there's Peter Green, there's Paul Kossoff, there's Dave Gilmour, there's uh, there's Rory Gallagher. You know, there's all these guys who have, have poked their heads in. And um, but the core too are Jimi Hendrix and John Frusciante. You know what I mean? I, I just I just wanted to be like them. I just wanted to sound and play like they do. And it's never really that's never really changed. Like you know, it'll be eight. I've I've been playing guitar eighteen years in May. So for eight yeah for like eighteen years, I've just kind of like you know I just wanted to do what they do and play like they play and sound like they sound and just kind of like be an amalgamation of both of them. Obviously, I can you now. Now, what be an amalgamation of just like you know of, of more people? But John is kind of like the, the 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 biggest on the list, the highest on the list. But there's obviously other people in there. You know, like I say, um, you know, Mike McCready is another one as well. Um, but be, but because I knew which style I wanted to play in, when I did try something that I didn't like. I would know immediately. For instance, I was in a Pantera covers band for a while, and I didn't. It didn't work. I could feel it didn't work. I, I, I've tried doing other things here and there, and I can feel when it doesn't work. I've been in so many bands where I'm just like, this isn't the style I want to play. You know, I've, I've done it sometimes where I'm like, you know, I've, you've got to, you know, you've got to because you need, you know, you need to live. So you know, you need to do that kind of thing. But I always wanted to be like John and Jimmy, you know. And I say obviously a few others now as well. I like just mashed them all together into this big cooking pot. But um But like I say, yeah, because I knew the style I wanted to play and I knew what I wanted to sound like when I played, when it came down to other styles coming in that I knew that I I didn't click didn't click with me and I didn't feel, I knew that it wasn't right. You know, for instance. Um I remember like, you know, learning you know, shred stuff when I was in London, studying in London, and, and I was just like, this isn't, this isn't for me, don't want this, don't want to learn this, don't want to play this, I'm not interested, you know, there was certain other bits and pieces, um, I have took elements from these different styles, 
but they're not a style that I like to play or, or enjoy or particularly sometimes enjoy playing. You know, um, for instance, like I really love Buckethead, but I don't like his weird atonal tapping and some of his weirdness. I like Buckethead's more melodic, like, you know, soothing music instead of kind of like a full out craziness. Some, some of the craziness is really, really cool, but I, I've got no desire to play like it. You know what I mean? Um, I enjoy it for what it is, but I don't have any desire to actually do it. You know what I mean? It's like, you know, I would much rather play like John Fashanti and Jimi Hendrix and Dave Gilmore than play like, you know, a, a, a shredder like, say, like um, like Steve Vai or, or Joe Satriani or, 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 or Buckethead Shreddy stuff. You know what I mean? Uh, to an extent, I mean, I like Soothsayer, but there's a lot of room for expression in Soothsayer you know, and stuff like that. But I, I like Buckethead's kind of more melodic stuff. I like that more melodic way of playing. And, you know, Dave Gilmore is a classic example of that. Peter Green is, Jimi Hendrix, John Fashanti is, you know, all these guys that just kind of like play one note and you're just like, whoa, God, it's just like, you know, blows you away, just that one note. You know, that's 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 what I wanted. I wanted to be able to kind of like connect with people instead of just, I'm not interested in wowing people with technical virtuosity on the guitar. I want to be able to kind of like reach out and grab people with music and, and take them away and make them feel better about things, you know, that everything's going to be okay, which I've spoke about at great length, you know, before. So, but, um, but yeah, that, that kind of thing really. Um, but the main note there is, but there is a lot of styles that I've just kind of like stacked off just because it doesn't work for me. And, and like I say, because I know what I want to sound like and I know what I want to play like, when something does come along that I'm like, nope, you know, I immediately know. It's like, it's like amplifiers and pedals and guitars. When I pick them up, because I know what I like and I know what I want, and because I'm an absolute nightmare for being like a stuck in my ways kind of creature of habit, I immediately know when something won't work for me. And I immediately know when something's not right for me as well. If I, if I, if I plug into an amp, I immediately know what I want, want out of it. And if I can't get it, then I'm not interested. Same with a pedal and same with a guitar. If I don't connect with these things, then I don't want them. I'm not interested at all. Um, you know, it, it's you know, it, it's it's just the way I've always kind of been. Really, I just kind of know I know what I'm after. You know what I mean? Uh, instead of kind of like going, oh, I don't know if I like this. It's like I immediately know within 15 seconds I can tell you if I'm going to get on with something or I'm not going to like it. And there, there was a comment on the Arare video which was, uh, have you ever reviewed anything you don't like? And uh, yeah, I mean, I've, I've, I've been sent things and I've come across things that would have made it, made for maybe a cool video, but I, I, don't, I don't like it. Uh, and it's, it's kind of selfish in a way, um, shellfish. But I don't want to do a review on something that slates a product just because I don't like it, because that's not fair on the product and it's also not fair on you because you might like it. So if I do a video on something and I, I go, oh, this is horrible, this is rubbish, I don't like this, I can't recommend it because I don't like it, you might avoid it, but that might be your dream amp. You know what I mean? So I would rather not do a review on a product that I don't like because it could sway you not to try it. Whereas I think you need to try everything. For instance, I, I, I won't review Black Star amps because I don't like Black Star amps. But it doesn't mean that that's a bad amp for you. You might you might plug into a Black Star and love it. You know, it might be like, oh my God, where's this sound been all my life? You know what I mean? But for me, I don't get on with them. So, you know, and, that, and that's the same with kind of music. It's like, like, I know what I don't like, but the fact of the matter is, it doesn't matter what I like. <laughs> anyway, I've, 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 I've lost my way a bit. There we go, Tangent. I need to get t-shirts with Tangent Boy on, don't I, or something. I'm absolutely, this is, anyway. But no, that is, no, but, that, but that, that, that kind of is a point to that. You know, um, but no, I mean, that, that's the thing is, I don't like to review products that I don't like because, like I said, I don't want to sway people's opinion on it just in case it might work for them. You know, because, like I said, I mean, if I, for instance, uh, Boss Katana Mark II, I don't like the Mark II whatsoever. I don't like it. I didn't get on with it. I tried and tried and tried and I wanted to love it and I wanted to love it so much and I just didn't and it didn't click and it really annoys me to this day. And the same with the Marshall Code. Uh, the Marshall Code actually is a video that I hate. I hate that video of the Marshall Code and I'll explain why in a minute. 
But I really wanted to like the Boss Katana Mark II, and I can't. I like the Mark I more. But there's loads of people who like the Mark II over the Mark I. You know what I mean? So it's like, you know, that's why I didn't... That's why... Because the Mark II sounds great. It does sound great. But they, there's, there's a disconnect for me. But like I said, I don't want to do a negative review. I don't like doing negative reviews. Because like I said, it could very easily persuade you not to try something when it might be the perfect thing for you. You know, because we're all different. We all like different things. We're all, we all are going to have to find what we like and what we don't like. So, for instance, like, you know, I don't like Mesa Boogie amps either. I've tried so many Mesa Boogies, you know, from uh, dual rectifiers, triple rectifiers, to the Lone Stars, to uh, I tried a Stiletto at one point, which was... The clean channel was all right, but again, it's still not for me. Uh, I've tried Engel. Engel are okay, but the mid-range is a bit too much for me. You know, all these all these amps, Soldanos, uh, Laney, uh, stuff like that. I know what I want for an amp, and I've tried all these amps, and I'm just like, now nah, it doesn't work for me. But the fact of the matter is, that's what works. That's what works. That's I, I, I know what doesn't and what works for me. For you, it might be totally different. If I bugged into a Laney amp, say, for the sake of argument, and go, that doesn't work for me, you could plug into it and go, my god you know what i mean it, it, it's it's totally different so I, yeah I, that's why i say just try everything you know if if an opportunity comes up to try an amp just do it regardless of what what it is you know if somebody says oh do you want to try this you know if you're a clean player and somebody says do you want to try my mess boogie dual rectifier stack yes say try it you never know you might love it you know what i mean but and the same comes down to again I, oh yeah I'm, I'm kind of coming back around now same goes down to kind of like musical styles. Like, you know, I know what I like to play and I know what I want to play like. So, and I have tried all sorts of different styles and I can play, I, there are styles that I love playing. I love playing reggae. I do love playing punk music. I love playing heavy rock. I love playing like Rifferama stuff. I love playing kind of like, you know, um, you know, African guitar. I love African guitar style. Like there's a, there's a style called Sukus, which I absolutely adore. Um, you know, I like playing that. I like playing kind of like, you know, all these little things. I like playing folk music as well. Um, like, you know, all, like classic folk music. But I always come back to that John Fashanti, Jimi Hendrix style. And, you know, and, and, and you know, it's just, it's just I know what, I just know what I want to play like at this point. But it'll probably change over the years. It'll probably change, you know, as I get older, things will probably change. And I want to develop into different kind of levels and different styles maybe. But I don't think for one second John Fashanti style will ever leave me. Because people say all the time, like, do you get bored of playing that style? No. Not once. I love it. I love it so much. It makes me happy. You know, that's all I want to play like, to be honest. I just want, I just want to play like John. I want to play like Jimmy. You know what I mean? I'm not interested in kind of being kind of like... I'm not interested in kind of going anywhere else at this point in time. I'm really happy. I'm really comfy. And I'm really settled. And like, again, I'm a creature of habit. So once I find something that I like, I stick to it like glue. And, you know... Uh, same with pedals and guitars and stuff like that and you know I'm, I'm, I am a creature of habit if it's not broke don't fix it you know there's no point so um and that you know that goes for musical styles if i don't if i if something doesn't click i'm not interested you know it doesn't matter how hard i can try and force things in if it doesn't click i'm not interested Jan uh, django reinhardt's music was a classic example of that i like i love it but i can't i've got no interest in playing like it at all um and the same thing with kind of like shredding and eight finger tapping and stuff like that. That that style went out the window a long time ago. I mean, it's fun to do every now and again. And I like to do it every now and again just to kind of like keep the fingers going. It's quite a nice little exercise, you know, just keep your fingers going. But it's not particularly where I want to be, you know. And like I say, I mean, that, that goes the same with kind of like doing negative reviews. I'll never explain why I didn't like the Marshall Code video. I don't like the Marshall Code video quickly as a final point to this. Because I slate it because I don't like it. And I don't like it because of that. The unboxing video and the actual review of it, I, I'm not happy with that video at all because all I did was slate the amp. And a lot of people have said, "Well, this is my favorite amplifier." You know what? You know what, why don't you? You know why don't you like it? It's, you know I don't like it because I didn't like it. It, 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 it. it didn't work for me. You know what I mean? It just didn't work for me. But other people like it, and because of that, I'm thinking of deleting the video. And I'm also thinking of giving it another go. I'm thinking of buying another Marshall Code and spending as much, a, a lot of time with it. And a lot, a lot of time. I mean, I'm, I'm talking, if I buy one tomorrow, I won't do the review till November. <laughs> you know what I mean? 
just because I really want to understand it. And I don't feel hearing people's talking about the way they talk about the martial code. Uh, martial code is I do feel that maybe I didn't do it. Just didn't do it justice. I don't know. I mean, to me, it didn't work. I just didn't feel it. It was the same as the Katana Mark II. Just didn't feel it. It wasn't there. But you know what I mean. I don't, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. But I don't like the Marshall Code video because it's a negative review, and I don't like that. I don't. I don't want this channel to be about negative reviews. I want it to be about positive things and, and, and things that kind of like, you know, work. And like I say, the key to finding your own sound is to try everything. You've got to try everything. You know, you've got to try things that you don't, oh, I don't think I would like that. You don't know until you've tried it. You know what I mean? You've got to try it. You know what I mean? To know you don't like it. You can't just go, you can't look at something and go, oh, I wouldn't like that. You might. You know what I mean? Uh, I never thought I would absolutely adore BC Rich Mockingbirds, but they are one of my favourite guitars of all time. I don't own one because um, I, I spend my money on Stratocasters instead. But one day I will own a BC Rich Mockingbird because I love the Mockingbird. I love Firebirds. You know, I love all these weird, angry, pointy guitars. But and and you, and you can't say you don't like something until you've tried it. You know what I mean? It, it's one of those. It's like food. You can't say, "Ah, oh, I wouldn't like that 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 meal." If you've never tried it, you might. You just don't know. You haven't given it a chance. So you know. But for me, because I have tried so much stuff, because I've been a, I've been very lucky. I've been very fortunate to obviously work in a guitar shop where there was so much stuff, and I've been in certain situations where I've tried so many amps, so many guitars, so many pedals. I know what I want. I know exactly what I want, and I know exactly what I want from it. And the same goes for musical styles. When I pick up a guitar, I know exactly how I want to sound, how I want to play, how I want. The, the, the tone to come across so uh, and the style and how the style wants to come across so uh, so yeah anyway i'm gonna have to i'm gonna have to call it a day there because i'm out of time so um so i hope that question's okay everybody if you want to submit a question to q a wednesday uh, description box below as an email link forward your questions to that email link below um have i got anything else to say i don't think i have no, I hope I've answered your questions okay, everybody. Um, and I will see you again on Friday for a video. It's a, Friday's video is very, very um, close to my heart video. So um, Friday's video means a lot to me. So, um, and I, it, it's, it was a, it was probably one of the most difficult videos I've ever had to film just because of the, the emotional weight of the video. So uh, Friday's video, I'll, I'll see you on Friday's video. Things got a bit, Things got a bit emotional for Friday's video, but I'll, I'll see you on Friday then for that. And uh, yeah, and uh, have a great morning, afternoon, good evening, everybody. Have a great one. Uh, like I said, I hope that's your questions okay. Submit questions to the email in the description box below. And uh, yeah, I will see you again very soon. Have a great one. Goodbye.